Ed Blakely has served in different capacities under a succession of presidential administrations, has guided government policy on urban planning and is a widely cited academic. My name is Sean Britton and each week Ed and I have a chat about what's the latest news out of the United States, talking everything politics, planning and policy from sea to shining sea. Find us on iTunes, Wooshka, Facebook and Twitter at US of Ed. Donald Trump Jr. has agreed to a meeting with a Russian lawyer after responding to an email saying the Russian government was rooting for a Trump presidency by saying, I love it. Is this clear cut enough for collusion? Well, not only that, he invited some other people to the meeting. That is collusion. If you and I met with some other people about a subject that was not legal, we are co-conspirators. It is uh, collusion. And this is, of course, involving other members of the Trump campaign at the lead, in the lead up to the election. This is uh, Jared Kushner, and uh, who is who is also Trump's son-in-law, and uh, Paul Manafort. And pa- Paul Manafort. So these are people who were not in the background. These weren't people who were sitting around taking notes. These are primary people. Why would you invite them to the meeting? You're expecting something that is going to be useful. Whether you got it or not does not diminish the conspiracy. You are guilty for having done it. What kind of were, what kind of response have we seen uh, from this one so far on the uh, Republican front? Well, there are a couple of things. Uh, Republicans are treading very lightly here uh, because no one wants to be caught out saying, well, because he didn't do anything bad, it was okay. So the Republicans we're hearing from are backdrop people, news media types, people who are deep in the campaign, uh, people who have some name, but they are not the front people. And the reason for that, they don't want Mueller coming after them. So one has to be very careful. Uh, This is quicksand. If you stick your finger in it, it might pull you under. You know, Trump himself has tweeted support for Trump Jr., saying uh, he did the right thing but has remained uncharacteristically quiet. How long can this go on, this sort of this this brick wall sort of approach? Well, uh, the reason he's not tweeting is the tweets are getting them in deeper and deeper trouble, including his son's tweets of those emails. Uh, the lawyers have closed in on these guys and saying, do not say anything to anybody unless we allow you to do it. So Donald Trump is now a prisoner. He's locked up in the White House, unable to communicate. And if you look at that recent communique, that doesn't sound Trump-like. The lawyers helped him write that. Uh, The other big names in the Republican Party have either remained silent or stepped away. And one that hasn't, interesting enough, is the one that ran for president. And uh, John, um, John McCain, yeah. Okay. So it seems to me that they are all now thinking this house is going to fall. Let's make sure it doesn't fall on us. You mentioned uh, Robert Mueller there a moment ago. I did want to touch on the fact, um, looking at the FBI, we seem to have a new FBI head. He's been testifying before the Senate, uh, Christopher Ray. What's the what's your take on this one? He was obviously nominated by Donald Trump, but he's almost distanced himself from Trump a little bit since he's uh, well since he's been called up to testify. Uh, well, first of all, uh, look, if you're looking for a show host, the first thing you do is look for the person on the top of the ranking. By the time you get to the sixth rank, you don't really care. You just want somebody on the show. And that's what it is. This is a guy who has a decent record, nothing outstanding, uh, nothing troubling. And so Trump thought he'd control him. But now the guy's testifying, he is already out of control. He's distanced himself from Trump by the second or third question when asked, if you were doing the same thing that Donald Trump Jr. is doing, what would your advice be? He'd say, I go see a good lawyer and I'd probably talk to the FBI. So here's a man who wants to now make a name for himself, and it might be at the expense of Donald Trump. 
You know, one great headline coming out of this week, uh, somebody claiming to be an ex-KGB sp- uh, a KGB spy saying he or Putin couldn't have planned all this better. America has monumentally shot itself in the foot, essentially, with the Trump presidency. Do we see the Russians actually taking advantage? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they even threatened this weekend that they uh, will send their people back or expel all the Americans from the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and retaliate in other ways, they are not afraid of Trump, and they're showing it. And they're saying they'll do whatever they want um, uh, in uh, their territory. So they're not moving any troops out of the Crimea or anything else. Uh, They are just sticking their nose Uh, their finger and and Trump's nose saying, we will do what we want. And I think this would be the big one we'd be talking about if it wasn't for Donald Trump Jr. this week, the the Republican health care bill before the Senate. Now, Trump has said he'll be very, very angry if the bill doesn't get passed. Republicans have been divided on this one for quite a while. But given the, the current situation and just how tumultuous it actually is, What's your take, and what's your take on the fail, on the failure of the Republicans to actually get this one through the Senate? Usually, the president is the tiebreaker, the person who can get the job done. This has been true for every president, including Bush, the recent Bush. Uh, this president has no stature with the members of the Congress, and certainly no stature with the nine people who are holding out. It looks like it might grow to 12 because they fear the voters more than they fear the president, and they certainly don't want the president actually campaigning for them. So my sense of things is that if a health care bill comes out, it'll be a repair of Obamacare and not a replacement, Mm. if they can get there. And just finally, Ed, we've spoken uh, not long ago about people protecting their... Uh, protecting their careers in this administration. You mentioned your own time in the uh, in the Nixon administration, for an example. Now, with all these latest revelations, is the uh, so the ass covering? Are the leaks likely to get worse? Well, there's been a very strong rumor that's reached my ears that there are people tr- fighting to give information to the FBI and others <laughs> on their way out. <laughs> so they will have a future. So there's a lot of infighting going on in the White House, in the West Wing, where people are trying to ingratiate themselves with the media or somebody because they have no future. There is no way that you can hold your head up high with this on your resume. Uh, But it goes on, it's really worse than that. I've got a number of friends in the State Department and HUD and other places no work is going on. Only the bare minimum work. People are playing cards all day. Believe it or not, in the State Department, people are having six cups of coffee a day. That's a place that used to work 24 hours a day. People have stopped resigning because they know they can't be fired and just sitting around, burning up the payroll, doing nothing. Absolutely extraordinary. I guess in... In relation to that, though, of course, um, the very likely uh, next president of the United States, Mike Pence, he's kind of he's kind of distanced himself from this. He said that uh, the whole Donald Trump Jr. situation that took part before he was even part of the campaign. What is your feeling? Just perhaps as as a final, final point, what's your feeling on Pence? Is he actually going to stay unmarked in all this? Is he going to manage to uh, slide into the big chair? without the sort of uh, the stain of this uh, administration clinging to him? I think he is. Uh, If you know the way he's positioned himself, he came here to Australia, very clean skin, made a nice performance here. Every place he's gone has been there. He has not been seen standing next to the president unless it's something ceremonial. Uh, He was, I don't believe he was next to the president in the climate change uh, thing. He was in the background someplace. Uh, his office is very separate from the office of the president. Uh, his people 
are not allowed to go to the West Wing unless they have to. Uh, he is preparing himself to be president of the United States. He may not be a good one, but he'll certainly be an honest one. Ed, thank you very much. Pleasure as always. Really appreciate you uh, joining us this week after just such an incredible week. I thought this was going to be an easy week. I was planning on playing some tennis this week, but my <laughs> God. No rest for the wicked, mate. Thank you. We'll speak to you again next week. Take care, mate. Bye. Ed and I will be back next week to talk the latest on American news and politics. Subscribe on iTunes and Wooshka to stay up to date and show us some love on Facebook and Twitter at US of A.